I had been writing this book, preparing for this book by talking to many of you, and I'd recognized this in some of you. And now I'm hearing it in myself. I, I, I guess it was during that time I was just struck as a pastor by how many conversations I was having with people who were experiencing different emotions because their way wasn't working. They were frustrated and angry or they were just worn out and exhausted, or they were just discouraged to the point of despair. And, and the more I talked with people in the church, the more I recognized, man, this is, this is really an important message for the church, for followers of Jesus during this time. And then I started to see that I need that message too. I, I talked with that executive coach a little bit more. He asked me more questions, and, and I saw two more responses in myself that maybe you'll recognize, blame and complain when I'm expressing my frustration over certain situations, this is what I was doing. I blame people, complain about circumstances that I had no control over. And so when you find yourself dismissive and defensive and you're blaming and complaining, it's a good indication that your way isn't working and really maybe what you need is to receive and respond. That your defensiveness and your dismissiveness, your blaming and complaining, really it's an invitation to receive some things and then respond, realign some areas of your life. He asked me this question in the middle of it while I was doing my blaming and complaining. He asked me this question and when he asked it, I was a little frustrated because it's supposed to be my question. He said, how, how would you say it's working for you? I'm like, you stole that from me. <laughs> I, that's the question I ask. When I talk to people as a pastor, hey, how's it, how's it working for you? Can we just step back? I, I know you're kind of defensive about the position you're in or about the situation you find yourself in, but how's it working for you? And I've asked this question all the time. I, I looked back over my notes, different people I'd asked it to as I prepared for this book. I, I asked it to a middle-aged man who had all the toys, but still, still felt empty. Like, how's it working for you? You think if you just keep getting more toys, that that emptiness will go away. I, I asked it to an alcoholic who was trying to get over a second divorce. I asked it to a woman who, who seemed very much put together on the outside, but just felt like her life was out of control. I asked it to a young pastor who felt like it was his job to make everybody happy. How's that working for you? Is that working pretty well? I asked it to a CEO who's killing it at work, but only vaguely aware that he has little people running around the house when he gets home. I asked it to a longtime church member who was becoming more and more obsessed with what was happening in the news and in the culture and just feeling overwhelmed with anxiety and disillusioned with politics. It was just affecting everything in his life. How's that working for you? That working pretty well? So it's a question, I, when he asked it to me, well, I knew that it's a question I ask people when other people recognize how it's working for them, but they don't see it. So when it was asked of me, I'm like, oh, do other people recognize this? And I'm not the one who sees it because that's, that's usually when I ask the question. And it just brought me back to what was so, what is so foundational to us as followers of Jesus, but sounds too simple. Meaning when we find ourselves in a position where our way isn't working, we want something somewhat complicated we assume that because we're in a complicated situation that the solution to get out of it will be complicated. We wanna, we wanna work our way out of it by following a task list. We want some information that's gonna show us a different way. And yet what Jesus does is he calls us back to a deeper connection. And so a foundational passage of scripture for us as a church is John 15, where Jesus says to his closest followers, I'm the vine, you're the branch. If you remain in me and I remain in you, you'll bear much fruit, but apart from me, you can't do anything. Apart from me, you can do nothing. And he says this to them right before he's gonna be arrested to be crucified. He says this to them when he is very much aware that what they're going to face will be struggle and suffering and difficulty and challenge. He knows how they're gonna be treated by people. He knows that they're gonna feel overwhelmed by the mission that he gives them. He knows that they're gonna struggle with inadequacy when they try to step into that. Like he, he knows that if they try to do things their way, it's not gonna work. They're in, they'll end up being divided with one another, not getting along. If they try to do things their way, they're gonna end up exhausted 
burn out, call it quits. If they try to do things their way, the discouragement will be too much. It'll give way to despair and they'll drop out. So Jesus says, look, here's the one thing I want you to remember and never forget. I'm the vine, you're the branch. Be the branch, stay connected to the vine. So that when your way isn't working, what do you do? Well, the instinct is more. I need to do more. But Jesus calls us to abide, to stay connected to him. The word in the NIV is remain. Remain in me as I remain in you. I think 11 times in that handful of verses, Jesus says, abide and remain, stay connected. And so that simple invitation tells us, this is what you do when your way isn't working. You, you focus on the connection.